the business show and we happen to have the one and only, the man who is a great visionary, Raphael. Welcome. How are you doing, my man? I'm good, I'm good. Good, good, good. So, we were just having a little chat earlier on yeah. about your whole vision to create this business, uh, the black business show. So, what, what inspired that? Yeah, so, I mean, um, UK Black Business Show is going into its third year now, um, as I mentioned. And I'd worked on a few exhibitions before, um, quality exhibitions where we had a huge amount of businesses coming from across the globe um, to a show called the UK Investor Show. Um, and it dawned upon me that there wasn't really no big exhibition um, for black owned businesses. Um, and speaking to you know some of my friends who are business owners, they didn't really feel there was a place for them to sell their products. Um, so I mean, we've got shows like the UK, um, like the business show that we're at today, uh, which is great that we're speaking here. So you um, decided that you was going to come up against the business know, show. The <laughs> business show's been running for something like 25 years, and this guy says, you know what, we can do our own. Yeah, I mean, there, there was nothing like it, and uh, when we launched, we booked the space for 25 stands initially. But no, take me back a little yeah, bit, yeah. because like, it's not easy to do what you're doing. Yeah. So from getting the vision. To manifest the vision, you know that's a big jump. Right? Many yeah. people have these great ideas. Yeah. That took some work. How did you navigate from that that state of, oh, right, I've got this idea. Yeah. Now I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to get the team. Tell us a little bit about that. So, uh, for me, it was all about once I thought of the idea. Spoke to a few people. I spoke to my wife. Uh, she was like, yeah, go for it. Um, but for me, I knew I had what I needed in place to, to execute. It. Okay. For and me, what was that? What was that that you? Because you know, yeah. and I know that what's it, 80, 90 percent of the businesses that start in their first year fail yeah. because they don't have the things that they should need. So what did you? Do? Yeah, so it's not something I jumped into blindly. Um, I felt like I was the right person to do this um, by having the right connections in terms of completing my marketing diploma. Um, so I'm someone who thinks strategically. I know how to advertise. Um, I've worked on exhibitions and events before. Um, I knew quite a few recognised speakers and networks just through um, some of the music and comedy events I used to do when I first um, started up events. Um, so er, just from the start, I already had a few okay, connections that could right, help me out right, anyway. Right. Um, so I felt like I was in a better position than most people to be able to put. Um, and having just people around me who I know could deliver. So you know, getting a, a sick website, I know, especially in the, the community, um, black community, they're going to go on the website, they're going to see, does this look good? If it doesn't look good, they're coming off the page. Um, so I have to, literally have to grip them as soon as you come on there. Wow. And a lot of the feedback that we was getting was like amazing, I've been waiting for this. Um, we booked the space for 25, ended up getting 300 exhibit inquiries, and that was in our first year. For me, that was great. For me, it was great, but then I was annoyed because so I lost so much money. He's, so. <laughs> He's Nigerian, right? So, <laughs> but we're both Nigerian, so that's a big thing. Yeah. So you booked it initially for 25? We booked it for 25 stands. Um, no. And we was like struck thinking, okay, if we get 25, that's going to be like amazing. Um, and you got the, In terms of inquiries, we had over 300 inquiries turning away people the last month. Um, so we upscaled again second year, um, second year, now we're having exhibitors from all across the UK and Europe, um, Germany, tickets from Amsterdam, Scotland, Newcastle, Liverpool. Um, and that shocked you? It's, it shocked me. Or surprised you? In terms of the growth or... Right. Um, and the speed of the growth and the reach of the growth, like now you're going international. Yeah, for me, it's, it's, it has shocked me um, a bit, but then it hasn't shocked me. Reason why is because I know how to do marketing across the UK in terms of I know how to reach those people. Oh, you're yeah, that good. Um, oh, that good. But I know, you know, people well, it's that having the results, so obviously you're that good. You know, um, but it's shocked me in terms of you know the recognition. So it's been endorsed by Sadiq Khan, the Mayor of London. Uh, okay. We had uh, David Lamby as well. Uh, Stephen Lawrence's dad came to last year. Show um, his broadcast on ITV News. Um, so yeah, in terms of what's happening, that that's yeah, that's amazing. Um, but I mean, I think what shocked me is like the exhibits from Germany and Amsterdam, and that just shows it's not just a problem in the UK. 
that black owned businesses they don't feel like there's a place for them to exhibit and for someone to come all the way from Germany yes. to exhibit in the UK to just reach their audience shows that okay this is a problem that's everywhere uh, and, I mean we hope to to go you know global and have exhibits from all across the world uh, wow. so is it your belief that what you're doing is actually creating or addressing in terms of black women businesses being able to get what they consider to be adequate exposure? Yeah, um, I think when you see, see statistics, I think it's 0.3% of the top 500 companies. The top 500 companies are owned that have black CEOs. So in terms of representation, there's a huge problem there. Um, what the UK Black Business Show is trying to do is um, create a platform um, to first of all showcase some of the amazing black businesses, some that I had no idea even existed, legal firms, banks, but also equip entrepreneurs and professionals with like the right knowledge um, as well to be able to start up their business and to be able to also sustain it. Um, also creating role models. Um, so I think growing up myself, role models are like Sarah uh, Sugar, uh, Richard Branson, um, which is great. But representation matters. We want to see entrepreneurs that look by ourselves as well. So it, would you say that you're in that respect? You're kind of a bit of a rebel. Like, you no, know, I'm just asking the question, bro. Like, because that's what you're doing in effect. Um, that's what I picked up. Now, is that a conscious thing, or is it really? Tony, I'm just pointing to redress the imbalance that I've seen. Yeah, I think, I mean, yeah, some people call it rebellious. I mean, we, we get emails as well saying your show's racist. Uh, That's my point. Uh, your show's racist, uh, blah, blah, blah. And for me, it's just like... How do you handle that? Because you've got this constant, very calm persona. Yeah. Like, you know, like, like even you've got a super team around you. <laughs> and they don't let anything get to you. But, so how do you handle well, that? both both okay. and the super team um, but also if you ask anyone that knows me I'm someone who's relaxed sometimes I look too relaxed um, but I work hard as well um, so what was the question so the question um, guess what what I want to ask is like in terms of the like feedback yeah and, and yeah, the so negativity you know, people coming at that yeah for me it's like you have um, conferences like women in tech uh, and why is that it's because women are underrepresented in technology, black people are underrepresented in business. But here's the, here's the ironic thing, though. So I don't know if you know, because I know that you've done some, done some engagements with NatWest yeah. in the past. Yeah. So last month they started the first, to my knowledge, first ever eight-week pre-accelerated program exclusively for people of color. So the bank, the bank is catching on with what you did. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, for me. That's great. Um, I, I speak to NatWest anyway, um, so I was, I was aware of that. We actually promoted that through our, our email list. For us, that's great. Um, we're we're more than that in terms of we're creating role models, we're inspiring, connecting businesses. Um, we're also showcasing. So we hold it in Black History Month, October. Uh, to coincide with UK Black History Month. So there's a lot more than kind of what we do. It's not just, okay, we're helping out. Uh, it's a lot more to what we do. You're actually changing the landscape, really. Yeah, I, I hope so. Um, that's something which, yeah, we're passionate about doing. Um, and yeah, just hopefully we can. So what's the, the outlook for this year's? You know, what can people expect if they come to this year's Black Business? Um, more quality, um, even better quality than last year. But quality exhibitors, speakers, everything. Um, so I mean, all our speakers throughout the years have been great. Uh, but every year we also try to find another who's really making waves in that industry. So we have some great speakers like Jamal like Edwards, who's at MBE. Um, we've got um, the ladies who created Slay in Your Name. Could be spring over the back again. Actually, launching a book, she's done brand marketing for years, just to simulate. 
Um, we've got so many great speakers, I can't remember it off the top of my head, but um, just the quality exhibition, quality exhibitors, quality speakers, um, and an even more classier event. Um, yeah. Wow, that's fantastic. We're looking forward to it. And so, what's your vision ultimately? You know, the next five years from now, where do you see the Black Business Show and Raphael? Um, for me, I don't know. I don't know where I will be. Um, just whatever. <laughs> In the island, like, like Richard Branson, you've got, <laughs> got your own island and you would be just chilling and keeping back. You know, just, yeah, whatever. We're still trying to make it bigger and better exhibits from all across the world. But we want to have um, black business speakers from everywhere. So maybe we could have Diddy come down and do a tour. Wow. You never know. Um, but I mean, that's that's the that's the dream to basically so, London to be the hub. Okay. Um, and, and, we'll do, and do bigger events yeah. like, like like Tony Gorman stuff. It's like ten thousand. There we go. Um, and certainly in terms of we've been around going into our third year, um, but we're still two years. We turn three next year March. We're gonna have over two thousand. So I, I mean, five years time. Yeah, we could have quite a huge audience. Um, but we're having a hundred exhibitors this year. We've already got. We had 57 last year. We've already got that much now. Um, we've already got 57. Yeah, we've already got that much. So we've already matched last year. Now, wow. almost four months ago. Um, so it's growing rapidly. Um, yeah, exciting. Well, listen, man with the vision, man with the dream, and a man with the capacity to make it happen. Thank you very much for your time. It's been Great a real pleasure, and, and love what you're doing. Thanks, and of course, if you want. How can people meet you? Um, so follow us on social media, that's UK BB Show. Um, and then I'm Raphael Sofnu on everything. Yeah. So you heard it. First, the man Raphael with a great vision. If you want to check out the Black Business Show, now you know how to do so. It's been wonderful talking with you. And uh, yeah, so go check out. It's me, Tony Dalla, your soul brother. And Raphael. Thanks, Thanks again. Nice one. See you soon. Peace out.